Cork beat Dublin by six points, and to say it should have been double that is probably an understatement. Completely ran the dubs off the road, and you see certain people saying that the intensity, like Richie Power tweeted, I've seen more intensity in a junior B game back in March. Bigger question is how did this Dublin team claw back a 16 point lead in Kilkenny last weekend? Fair point, but um, the lack of pressure from um, from Dublin here allowed Cork to play the ball around in a way that Waterford didn't allow them to do, and the stick passing on show was exceptional. Like there's so many scores that Cork got for one little thirty yard stick pass to another man who was in space, which is the criminal part of it, and a free Cork man as well to knock it over the bar. Um, Dublin didn't start with a sweeper, but once they did, and moved Conor Burke into that position, that allowed Cork to have Mark Coleman do the same thing at the other end. And there was a world and a difference in how how much ball he got on. Now, of course, the pressure further up the field meant that the Dubs couldn't actually deliver the ball in nicely. And there was times when you were looking at Dubs 30, 40 yards out from their own goal, looking up, thinking, where can I hit this? And genuinely, I'm looking out in the field and I'm going, there's nowhere to hit this ball. So that makes Coleman's job a bit easier. But there was, like his use of the ball, the way he covered the ground, how tidy he was in possession, Conor Burke at times did spill a bit of ball. But um and then the question is should Sean Moran have been operating a sweeper and should Dublin have started with a sweeper in the first couple of minutes because it was one four to um three points. Declan Dalton got that goal after nine minutes, and I think it was at that stage more or less give or take when Dublin brought in a sweeper. But uh kind of the tone for the game had been set at that stage. Cork's movement um and pace really, really upset the dubs because in defence Dublin just don't have enough pace. But either way, the way that they allowed the puck out to, to kill Dublin, I just couldn't understand at all. Um, you had the likes of Robbie O'Flynn, who was my man in the match, absolutely brilliant, scored five points, the Aaron's own man. Um, he was allowed to run into space, so the Cork players would crisscross and the Dubs would follow them across the field. I mean, that's where you go with a zonal puck out strategy, which Cork did at times. Like, if that happens once, you say, fair enough, I'll follow my man again. Second time it happens, you're like, okay. We're, we're going zonal now because it's pretty obvious what Cork are trying to do. If you do that a couple of times, the Cork forwards will give up doing it. I mean, it's the same at all levels. Force them to, to beat you another way. But across the board, the Cork forwards, like Seamus Harley scored five. Shane Kingston was brilliant in the first half. Robbie O'Flynn, like, just powerful pace out of him. Jack O'Connor got a point, set up a few things. Declan Dalton got 1-1 one, one early on. Um, taken off in the second half Patrick Horgan scored a couple he was man-marked by Owen O'Donnell that was a really good battle I mean O'Donnell probably won it overall I would imagine but Horgan knocked over his free set up a few scores did a few nice things that first half what really stood out to me was the amount of times that Dublin gifted scores to Cork Cork's hurling was so much sharper like they have tastier players there's no doubt about it and Dublin have an awful lot to do on, on that front but I was just even looking back over it and in the first half at the very end of the half, somebody hit a ball up the line to Danny Suckley. If he miscontrolled it, Horgan threw it over the bar. As I said, Owen O'Donnell was on him, but that's not Owen O'Donnell's fault. Um, so that was knocked over just through a spill in possession. No, no need for it. Conor Burke had a couple of turnovers. Um, Robbie O'Flynn got a score when James Madden was hitting the ball to Dara Gray. Or sorry, Dara Gray was hitting it to James Madden, and he just spilled the ball. And it ended up as a point for Robbie O'Flynn. Um, so, yeah, also the delivery of the Dublin players to the forwards. I said at times there wasn't really options, but some of the deliveries was like ball where it was sort of skittery ball, which was just almost hanging on the ground, just sitting there and you had to try and run out full pace at it with a man up your backside. It was it was very poor delivery. So, like, it's the manner of defeat for Dublin. Like, it's two years in a row you're going out in really bad circumstances. Last year against Leash, I know half the team was out. But, look, I mean, you're down players again this year and you just have to feel it and move forward. The manner of the defeat to go out in a fairly limp fashion here. Dublin got five of the last six scores, I think. There was nine points in it. And, you know, they eventually ended up losing by six. But, yeah, the, the manner of it was really poor. Like, to finish up with a forward line where it felt like a load of repurposed backs in the forward line. I mean, Chris Gummy went up there and scored three points, but it was only when he went into full forward, really, that I felt that he was any sort of a threat. He was very much lost in the half forward line, and he is an excellent player. But even just in the last couple of years in the Dublin Championship and with the Dublin Inter-County team, two of their best backs been are like standout players at club and county, and it's been Sean Moran and Chris Crummy. Sean Moran was dropped, and I know he didn't go well last week, but you know you obviously try and find a way to get your, 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 your best players kind of back up to speed and there's a couple of players out there on the Dublin team today or that came in you're thinking they're not really tasty hurlers so if you put 
crummy and more back in the half back line and you play a bit of zonal defence or start off with a sweeper and all that, they'll probably be, as the last couple of years, really solid at the backs. But again, the problem is just don't really have the forwards. Last year in Port Leash, taking off Keane Boland, didn't understand. Again, taking him off today, he had a couple of points scored. I think some other lads were probably even quieter. Danny Sutcliffe had had some very good moments, to be fair to him. Uh, Ronan Hayes, if it's get more better ball, I think that would have helped his case. Our Cork, um, our Cork All Ireland contenders again. I mean, I don't think anyone thinks they are after seeing that, and like put pressure on them. And will that hurling break down? Certain players had, had good performances. It's gone through most of them already. Like Matt Coleman, like playing as a spare man, you'd expect him to go to town. Um, their pace is going to upset a lot of teams. Like depending on how the draw goes. Their pace would certainly upset Tipperary and um, and Clare as well, you'd imagine. But um, yeah, even the fact that they could drop Conor Lahan, Alan Cadigan wasn't even in the twenty six, presumably because of of an injury, because he wouldn't drop him out of the panel. But the fact that they can drop him, that puts pressure on him to go better in training now. Albeit there's a quick turnaround for the next game, but the pressure is sort of on. Like a couple of weeks ago, I did a piece with Michael Foley the Sunday Times. He was talking about how players on the team they're just comfortable. They feel they won't lose their position. And now someone like Lahan, who's got talent, didn't do well when he came on, by the way, but we know he's capable of a lot. And um, yeah, so just a bit more pressure on the panel now. Some players stepping up. Jack O'Connor did okay. Robbie Robert O'Flynn is he's he's a nailed on starter from here on out. Obviously, not a good thing to lose Sean O'Donoghue in the first half. So we'll see what his injury is like in the full back line. Colm Splant did all right. And you want Owen Cadigan back in there as soon as possible. They can definitely trouble teams from here on out. Whether they can win in All Ireland, I'm not sure. But uh, let me know. Dublin or Cork win by six points. Dublin out, and um, geez, it's a long road back to being up anywhere near competing with the top teams. Based on this, I mean, what's it say about Kilkenny having them come from 16 points behind to draw a level? Um, look, maybe you just can't explain some of these things. Maybe Kilkenny will go to town against Galway in the Leinster final. Who knows? But a uh, long way back for Dublin. And for Cork, they needed this, and um, it's probably the minimum sort of display they should be should be producing in terms of like the quality they have. Whether they have the steel to go with it is the thing we'll find out.